Hello everyone! This time let's try something really simple. I didn't have time for anything more complicated because we are right in the middle of releasing our game, which is quite a time-consuming activity. But who knows, even a simple effect can be end up uh, being useful. Let's take a look at how we can implement such a digital burn. You might remember the burn transition shader I demonstrated in one of the previous videos, which was significantly more complex than what I want to show this time. However, a simpler algorithm also has its advantages. For example, it offers more customization options without the risk of breaking some sensitive part. This effect is based on simply replacing the colors of selected pixels, and it really only takes a few lines of code. Let's start programming. So once again, uh, this is a shader applied to an image. So I'll start by creating the usual scene with a Sprite 2D, which will contain a screenshot from our game. Uh, scenes, right click, create new scene, and let's call it, I don't know, burn. Oh, it would exist, uh, sorry. Digital burn, okay. And now, as usual, I will drag the image into the scene, which automatically created the uh, Sprite 2D node. And we need to set some parameters. We'll transform um, position, let's reset to 0, 0, and offset, cancel the centered. So now it's perfectly centered in the viewport. And of course, uh, let's not forget about the shader material. So material, new shader material, click and new shader, which is called Digital Burn GT Shader, canvas item, and I'll put it to the shaders folder, create and click again to open the shader in the editor. Let's expand the editor. All right, let's get rid of vertex and light functions as usual, since we don't need them. Okay, so how will we proceed? As with all effects that are based on a smooth transition from one state to another, we will need a parameter to control this state. I'll call it threshold and add it to the code as a uniform parameter. Uniform uh, float threshold with a hint range and initial value would be set to one this time. And it's from 0 to 1 with a step uh, 0 0.01. So why do we start at the value of 1? It means uh, that all pixels are in their original state and we end at 0 where all pixels will be turned off. Uh, so that's why the default value is set to 1. For next decision making process we will need the color of the current pixel and since the threshold is of a type float. We'll also need to convert the color to float. The simplest way will uh, be to use the arithmetic average of all RGB components, which is also a simplified method to convert the color to grayscale. Let's write the corresponding lines in the uh, fragment function. Okay, so first vector two UV is UV, just to assign the UV coordinates, and now the color is vector 4 from the function texture applied on the current texture and UV coordinates, and the grayscale uh, value float gray is, and as I said, the arithmetic mean color R plus color G plus color B divided by three. Great. And finally, we can assign the color to the color. So far, nothing has changed because I'm assigning the original color of each pixel to the internal variable color. But now we finally apply the basic effect. If the value gray is greater than the threshold, we will display black instead. So let's do it. If gray is greater, uh, sorry, greater than threshold, 
the color would be a black color vector 4 with components 0 0 0 and 1 as the alpha channel value let's wait for it okay and now let me show the full image or at least the major part of it and in shader parameters i will change threshold can you see how it's burning out yeah not bad but let's try to improve our algorithm it would definitely look more impressive if the pixels first changed to slightly fiery shades before eventually darkening completely we'll add more values to the decision making process but first let's define uniform parameters for the respective colors for simplicity i'll just call them first color and second color so uniform color is vector 4 first color with the hint source color so we will get the color picker in the inspector and the initial value would be shade of orange so uh, 0 0.8 0 0.4 point uh, sorry point 0.2 and 1 for alpha so this is the first one we can already see it here in the inspector and the second one i'll just copy paste second and this would be something like a dark red so uh, 0.5 for red and zero for other components one for the alpha value okay and yeah this is this is the one so as you can see i chose orange and dark red which are probably the most fitting for the burn effect now let's modify our condition by adding two more checks before one before the one we already have and each time we'll slightly adjust the threshold value so that the color change happens gradually like this so we have the first condition and now i'll wrap the second one around it like this uh, if gray is greater than threshold minus 0.1 let's do the second block and fix the indentation this is not everything now we need to set the color and we start with the second color because it should be applied after the first which will add shortly now when i move the slider the pixels will turn red and then black let's try it red and black great okay you've probably noticed that even in the initial state some pixels like these lamps are red which is due to the threshold value shift this one we'll address that soon but first let's add the orange color so just like before i will add another condition to wrap the uh, conditions we already have there if gray is greater than threshold minus 0.2 let's create this part and again fix the indentation and we need to add color is the first color now for the color shift as we can see for the red color we are subtracting 0.1 and for the orange it's even 0.2 so we need to add the same values to the threshold range and set the result as the new default value it's very simple we add 0.2 right here and make it the new default value and fix it here in the in the inspector so now if we take a look nothing is modified yet everything is fine now we can give it another try yeah burning burning burnt out cool uh, in a game however we will need this effect to be controlled from GD script so I'll add a simple script that will perform the burn effect automatically okay I'll save and now let's add a script right here to the scene click here and script digital burn GD create 
Okay, so we don't need the ready function and we don't need this comment, but what we surely need is a reference to our Sprite2D. So I'll just hold the control key and drag it to the code and I create it. Ah, sorry, I <laughs> selected both. So we definitely don't need this one. Well, let's delete that. Okay, this is the first uh, variable and now we'll need to have the threshold value which will change over time. And as we know, it starts at 1.2 and because uh, there should be a short delay before the effect starts uh, starts modifying the the image let's add some kind of delay var delay is for instance two seconds all right and now the process function so delay would be always uh, decreased by the delta value uh, delta and once it reaches zero or drops below the zero uh, zero let's do the animation so our um, our sprite is screen on zero four we need its parameter uh, i mean we need this material and set the shader parameter And we know the parameter is called threshold. So let's use it here, threshold, and the value is threshold. Fine, and of course we want to animate that. So now the threshold would be decreased by delta. And because, um, because it would be too fast, let's just multiply that by 0.2. And that's all. Let's try it out. I will just start a scene and wait one, two, and it's being burned. Let's wait for the result. Great. I will stop the process. In a real game, we would probably do this a bit differently. For example, using a tween that triggers after a certain player action and so on. But that's something for another time. Thanks for watching! This time I won't be going over additional ways to enhance today's effect. Instead, I'd like to use this epilogue to remind you that our game, Whispers of Prague, is already available on Steam. If you'd like to support us, please consider purchasing it and if you enjoyed the experience, please write a positive review. It would greatly help us in this early stage and even later on. You can find the link in the description of this video. In any case, I wish you a great day, much success with your projects and see you in the next video.